Hello, everyone. I am Neha Mehra, and I'm a student of a chemical and biomolecular engineering department at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, I'm advised by Dr. William Schneider, and welcome to this uh, virtual outreach session for 2021. So guys, why do we take our vehicles to the gas station? Why do we take our cars, bikes, buses, shuttles to the gas station? I hope you guys are thinking on the right line. Yes, we need fuel to fill in our car because fuel like gasoline or diesel acts like a source of energy for the car to start and run on the road. Much like the food helps us to give us energy when we have it in our own body. Can you recall different types of fuels? Well, yes, solid, liquid, and gas are the three different types of fuels that we have. In solid, we have coal that was earlier in olden times used to fuel uh, vehicles like steam engines. In terms of liquid, we use a lot of liquid fuel these days, such as petroleum, gasoline, or diesel. For gas, we have natural gas that we can either use in our vehicles or even in our gas stoves to cook food. How do we get the fuels in the gas station? That is the question at the first place. You guys are thinking, right, we get these fuels from beneath the earth. But these fuels, when we get them from beneath the earth, cannot be directly used in our vehicles. So we process them in the industry. For example, natural gas, it is present in the shale gas, which is trapped inside the shale formations deep within the Earth's surface. So as you see in this figure, these shale formations lie much below the surface of the Earth. Then how do we get the shale gas out from the shale formations? Well, we drill the, we drill the Earth and we get the gas out from the shale formations. And then we process it in the industry for our use. Does shale gas have only natural gas in it? No, my friends, shale gas is basically a mixture. What is a mixture? Mixture is made up of two or more different substances combined together physically. As you see in this picture, we have balls of different colors mixed together. So we call that a mixture, but the balls are still separate particles. We have mixtures all around us, like air, which is a mixture of carbon dioxide and oxygen gas. Even the food we cook, for example, pasta, that is also a mixture of different ingredients. Milk that we drink is also a mixture. So coming back to the shale gas, shale gas is basically a mixture of natural gas and some other types of gases and liquids, which we call ethane, propane, and butane. We can also write them as C2, C3, C4, depending upon the number of carbons in ethane, propane, and butane respectively. Because of all these gases present within the shale gas. Shale gas is an abundant source of energy, like natural gas. So what can we do with the energy of shale gas? Well, we can make fuels, right? We can make fuels to run our cars, our vehicles. Or we can make petrochemicals, such as plastic, wax. These petrochemicals are then used to make different types of things that we use in everyday life, such as helmets such as parts of tablets and laptop, the plastic containers, which are either used in food items or in other types of items like lenses. Even car tires like rubber are also based, basically made of petrochemicals. Now, let me tell you one more thing, that there's a tremendous amount of shale gas in USA. So that means tremendous amount of energy present in USA for us to use, but how? So C star is tapping into shale energy. C star, which is Center for Innovation and Strategic Transformation of Alkane Resources, is basically a collaboration of researchers from five different universities, such as Purdue, University of New Mexico, Northwestern University, University of Notre Dame, and the University of Texas, Austin. So the abundant amount of energy that is available in the shale gas is, be, is being used in C-Star, which will be shown by a video. Shale device. resources include a complex mixture of light hydrocarbons trapped in shale formations. However, this gas is not in a form that we can easily use. 
Our goal is to develop new technologies needed to economically convert shale gas into transportation fuels and petrochemicals, which will also reduce carbon emission. Shale. So my friends, as you just saw, that we are using, uh, we are developing technology within Seastar in a way so that we can use uh, energy of the shale. So let me give you some insights about what are we actually developing or what are we actually utilizing in Seastar to transform shale gas energy into useful products. For this, you'll have to do an activity with me. So come on, let's do an activity for which you need these following ingredients. You may pause the video now and bring all these ingredients and then let's do the activity together. So friends, before we uh, begin this activity, we need to take care of certain things in mind. As we are dealing with hot milk uh, and to have hot milk, if we are using stove, I'll suggest you have a beaker or a pan with a handle. If you're not comfortable or not feeling confident, ask your parents to come and help you. While heating the milk, do not leave it unattended because so as to avoid spills. Also keep stirring the milk uh, so that it doesn't uh, get stuck to the bottom of the pan while heating. And if you are using a microwave, only use a beaker or a container that is microwavable safe. Uh, prefer to use again a beaker with a handle. Do not microwave the milk for too long to prevent overheating and spills. Also, do not fill the entire glass beaker with milk. Leave some space on the top so that you can hold it with your hands and move it from one place to another. Keep a slight distance from the shelf on which you are placing the hot milk. So now we are all set to do the experiment. So I have vinegar over here. I have milk uh, in one of the glass uh, beakers. I have coffee filter papers, I have a stainer, uh, and I do have another glass beaker here. And I also have food coloring, uh, which is optional, but I'm going to use it since I have it. So I'm just going to uh, add two drops of uh, food coloring into this uh, glass beaker, which I have already filled half with milk. So if you guys have uh, not filled the milk in the beaker, so make sure you fill your beakers with half of the, half of the size of the beaker up with milk. So I'll just give it a quick stir. And I'm going to put it in the microwave. So my microwave is on the high and I will uh, set it for two minutes until the milk starts boiling. So my milk is already going to be boiled and I'm just going to take it out within five, four, Three, two, one. So I'm just placing the milk. Uh, it's very hot, guys. So be careful while handling it. So I just placed my uh, hot milk, which is almost like uh, near to the boiling point. And now I'm taking vinegar and just using the cap as a measure to add vinegar and i will keep adding until i see that my milk starts getting uh, separated into liquid and something white so i'm taking vinegar one cup of vinegar and i'm going to slowly add it after adding it i'm also going to give it a stir okay oh yeah see something white is being formed uh, which is on my spoon right now Cool. So once you see that white forming, you can take out the spoon. You don't know. You no longer need to stir it. So with just one cup of uh, one small uh, this cup of vinegar, my milk has almost separated into two different things. Uh, one is this uh, something like white thing within the uh, pink liquid. So now what I'm going to do, I'm taking my stainer and I'm taking my second glass beaker. Uh, and this tissue paper, uh, this coffee filter paper, I actually uh, tore into half because uh, this is what I can fit in my stainer. So I'm placing it here. And now I am going to pour without touching the hot milk. I'm holding the glass beaker from the top and I am pouring it into my second glass beaker via stainer. 
Ooh. <laughs> okay, cool. So guys, now basically I have separated my milk into two different things. One is this liquid and another thing is this solid, right? So basically this solid is the cheese or uh, the cheese that we eat separately from the milk. So this is the pinkish in color because I just added the food coloring. So let's get back and understand what does we, what do we learn from this experiment? I hope you enjoyed doing the activity. The question that we asked was, how are we transforming shale gas in sea star? Basically, we are using different types of chemical and physical processes. Like in this activity, we heated the milk, we filtered it, we also did some mixing. These are all physical processes and these can be reversed. On the other hand, the curdling of milk itself is a chemical process because there's a chemical reaction that takes place and this cannot be reversed, which means you cannot form the milk back after this reaction. So I hope you understood the activity so far. And by comparing, I'll give you the overview. So milk is a mixture, like shale gas is a mixture. Naturally also milk curdles, but very slowly. Lime juice or vinegar basically made this curdling reaction faster, and we call them as catalyst. Catalyst basically helps us run the same reaction faster. In sea star also, we use catalyst so that we can transform shale gas at faster rate and at lower energy. We also made two useful products after curdling milk. One was cheese and another one was the liquid stock for rice. Similar to, similar to what we do in sea star, we are basically trying to make fuels and petrochemicals from shale gas in sea star. So I hope with this activity and whatever we learned today, you got the overview about what is C-Star, what we are trying to do, and how we are trying to do. All the best for future, and keep watching Science Alive more demo videos. Thanks.